it's 5.45 p.m.-ish, which Ish. means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden alongside Joe Bushy, the show 5.45 Live. Joe, it's become customary for you to let people know out there what's coming up on deck. Oh, tonight's Sunday rally at VY headquarters. A three-alarm fire ravages a West Brattleboro residence, and we'll break down the weekend with event in a tent, Shakespeare in the Park, NEYT footage, and much more, all in 15 minutes, or about 12 now, on 545 Live. Stick with us. I got it. Very efficient. I concur. What happens next? Let's mix it up. Deploy the centrifuge. It's not working. What are we missing? Hi, boss. I'm back from lunch. I oh. Oh. That's it. The missing ingredient. Bubble gum. How could we have not thought of that? Try it. He's gone to a colleague in science. That was very cool, Roland. Very cool. Welcome back to this uh, July 3rd, 2012 edition of 545 Live. It's our midweek update. So if uh, you're watching here on Tuesday, we are live. We'll try and do the best damage control we can, as uh, always happens on live shows. If you're catching it Wednesday or Thursday, or, uh, as is now the case, um, stick around. We'll have a, a little section we put in uh, that allows us to uh, inject uh, more uh, daily updates, if you will. In the meantime, Joe was mentioning how cool it was. I agree. That's footage from Double Trouble, uh, BCTV's summer video camp spectacular film. Uh, Joe, we had 11 kids in here last summer. Uh, they came up with that piece the uh, highlight of their all themselves. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. A, a tale of troubled, uh, an action movie, really, uh, filled with clones and all sorts of drama. They came up with it themselves. Uh, and because, personally, I think it's maybe the best thing that uh, has ever happened here at BCTV video-wise, we sent it into the Alliance for Community Media's national contest. So every access center in the entire country submits um, their stuff to this contest, and that film walked away with Best Original Teleplay in the nation. So and who directed that? The kids took it on themselves. So not only who did they come up with though? that story. Was that BCTV, yeah. you and Yeah, Frederick? well, we host this camp every year, and it's coming up again, but uh, the kids do all the work. So Great. we just uh, sit there to make sure they know how to push the buttons on the cameras and the like. All right, no time to dilly-dally as the clock uh, ticks down behind us, ticks life away. Um, so uh, we'll jump into the next story, Joe, which was a story that kept you up late into the night last night, uh, and bit. that's the fire going on in downtown. I, I want to queue up uh, your footage, if possible, um, and maybe while it says Roland in the script, I'll have you read this part, Joe, as we uh, launch oh, in, and then we'll take a right. look at the, uh, the West, footage here. There we go there. West Brattleboro residents Peter and Doris Diamondstone have have had to declare their house of 44 years a complete loss after a three-alarm fire last night destroyed their residence along with a small cabin on their property. Uh, Peter Diamondstone and his partner Doris Lake, along with their pets, did escape unharmed, and the Brattleboro Fire Department, along with Rescue Inc. and engines from five other towns, managed to contain the place to the property, but not before the house was completely destroyed. So a look at uh, some of the footage that you shot there, right. um, which will jump us then, Joe, into our Reformer Roundup, which is where we uh, take a look at uh, the latest stories from the Reformer, kind of sum them up, and for that I'll turn you loose back uh, over to our script here. And All right. we'll uh, jump wow. right into that. And as you'll see, you're going to have to shift oh. maybe a little bit that the, way. Hey, there we go. There we go, so that uh, we can get you with our sweet new graphic over the shoulder there as well. All right, the over the shoulder logo. According to Brattleboro Reformer, well, DNA evidence may have located the killer of a Vermont woman who was strangled to death more than 25 years ago in Manchester, Vermont. Police now believe 52-year-old California man, currently serving 20 years to life for unrelated crimes, is the murderer of Sarah Hunter, the then 36-year-old golf pro who worked the Manchester Country Club at the time of her death. And now, studies around the state show elevated levels of E. coli carrying bacteria that could make some swimming spots, including two Williams River test points, dangerous for summertime swimmers. 
And to wrap up our reformer report, a 57-year-old Newfane man has been arrested after he allegedly beat a local couple with a metal pipe. All right, reformer more roundup. More details on that, Roland? Yeah, uh, you know, if folks want to get the, the full story, that's just a sample of what's going on there, then uh, they can check out reformer.com. You don't even need the Brattle Bro in there. Um, or a smartphone app. They do have a smartphone app as well, and of course I think the, the real gem that they would appreciate is to pick up a, an actual paper, some right. real uh, rainforest there. You can pick it up on a newsstand or get yourself a subscription. Uh, reformer.com, again, has got all that info. Just a summary from us, Reformer Report, uh, which now means we can uh, loose ourselves back on our stories and our video. Uh, and again, back to uh, your close-up, Joe, for this next story. All right, next. Members of the anti-Vermont Yankee affinity groups Sage Alliance and Safe and Green campaign were arrested Sunday at Vermont Yankee headquarters in Brattleboro during a protest that included a giant Trojan cow. BCTV prolific producer Maria Dominguez was on the scene. Turn me around, turn me around, and don't let nobody turn me around. We want to give a vision. We want to, we want to show the rest of this, the state, the rest of the region, the rest of the country that we can lead in energy renewables, to uh, energy efficiency and conservation efforts. That's our vision that we need to show the energy corporations of the world, the Monsantos. That's our vision that we, the people, need to communicate over and over and over again. Next, at last night's special select board meeting, the board uh, reviewed the numbers for this year's tax rate, which will need to raise uh, 12 million seven hundred and ninety-seven six hundred and sixty-seven dollars something like that. 12 million is really the number there. 12 and a half million um, at a rate of $1.0 and 0.1244 cents, uh, a modest 0.5 or uh, point, yeah, 0.54 percent increase from last year. Um, some of that money, says town finance director and treasurer John O'Connor, comes from a discrepancy in how the town and the state assess tax exemption. Part of that is the 17,243 for the locally voted exemptions. That's money that's not included in our budget. That's money that, because we've exempted veterans at a higher level than the state allows, um, we need to pay that money over to the state because they're still looking for their education taxes. Next, over the weekend, a Vernon man received a long overdue burial as residents turned out to honor John Sugman, a black Civil War hero who was denied a proper burial after he was unjustly implicated in the murder of his white wife. Longtime BCTV producer Carolyn Peck was there to gather the many speakers that included Vernon State Representative Mike Hebert. John was a courageous man. He joined our military at a time when a black man was sentenced to death if captured. Thank you for your service and welcome home. Welcome home, John Sugman. Mike Hebert uh, in Vernon, uh, footage from Carolyn Peck. Thanks for that. Uh, speaking of people working hard uh, behind the scenes doing volunteer time for 545 Live, uh, our content specialist Deborah Lazar was out at a bunch of different events this weekend. As uh, we get into our midweek update here on 545 Live, we're going to break down the weekend as well. Um, and we'll start here uh, with some footage from her event in a tent, and I can see your name on this part of the oh, script, Joe, so I'll turn you loose on it. Well, it looks like we'll start with Event in a Ten, a production of Hugh Keelan and Circus Arts, their community event which featured a performance of circus and full orchestra along with music workshop, drumming, and didgeridoo. There you go. We'll take a, a quick look at this here as we uh, break down these stories. Uh, plus, there's food there. I think that was part of uh, her script that she put in for us, making sure that we note that there's food. Um, so it was a bonus on Saturday night at the Brattleboro Living Memorial Park Outdoor Stage. The Vermont Theater Company presented Henry V. I believe we've got uh, that clip as well. Let's take a look. The game is afoot. Follow your spirit. And upon this charge, cry God for Harry! footage of Shakespeare in the park courtesy of Deborah Lazar. There's one more event uh, to talk about that she got footage of this weekend and she's uh, put together a little script piece for us as well. The New England Youth Theater, the Youth Troupe Melodrama as part of their camp was presenting their first of the summer season written and directed by Brattleboro residents Jane Baker and Nick Bombasino. 
Um, and here's uh, this little note straight from Debbie. Check the local event calendar and uh, come out to support local theater like this. <laughs> All right, uh, that's uh, about all I got for today's show, Joe, as we uh, sneak on, on past the... Traffic's the s- not too bad, and the weather's... Not too looking, bad either. Not too bad today, and there looking kind of so-so for tomorrow. Everyone stay tuned to social media. The uh, uh, schedule for the 4th of July, Brattleboro Goes Forth celebration is uh, uh, tedious with the weather. So, yeah, tentative. Uh, they said stay tuned to Radio, WTSA, WKVT, uh, Facebook. 6 30 you'll, you'll know if it's going to happen yeah so. i mean uh, 7 30 p.m is when they're going to know uh if in fact i'm gonna get you to roll this since i didn't write a little something about it if in fact uh it is on that means bc tv is going to track five cameras down the block and we'll get live coverage showing right here in bc tv channel 8 it'll start at 10 parade which is when the parade starts though the parade itself usually trucks through uh, around 10 30 wtsa's tim johnson and wvew's jim maxwell will be on the scene uh announcing uh, this parade for us and uh and to correct you the decision will be made by 7 30 a.m tomorrow morning that's boy i'm glad you uh i'm glad you caught Not that 7 30 p.m be a morning. little late to uh, make right. a decision for all of us there we'd be standing in the rain waiting for a parade that didn't happen all right uh just a few things left joe and i'll let you take this one where it says Alrighty. bc tv viewers bc tv viewers stick here on channel 8 tonight for a 6 45 debriefing of vermont's traffic news from vtrans and an 11 p.m. showing of the Nuclear Free Future episode, Devil's Tango. How I learned the Fukushima step-by-step. All right, uh, that's all we got here for the show. And since we're uh, ticking away past 6 o'clock, shocking, sinful, uh, we'll let all of you go out there uh, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, as Happy is the case, with, uh, with our midweek update. Thanks in particular to uh, content specialist Deborah Lazar, who came by BCTV and worked awfully hard to get us a script and clips from all those weekend events, uh, the event in a tent, NYT and Shakespeare in the park. That was great. She also brought us some ice cream, Joe, to enjoy after the show since we're cooking, cooking in this here. heat. Uh, thanks to all our other content specialists as well. Maria Dominguez, who is at the, the Common and at VY headquarters to get us that footage, and everybody else that makes 545 Live tick the way it does. Thanks, you viewers, for making it worth producing. That's enough of that spiel. All right, Joe, thanks for sitting with me at the desk. We'll say See night, you next everybody. Time. Deploy the center fuge. Sounds <laughs> more. I guess we did. Be cool. Bye. <laughs> nice. All right, and action. What do you know about this clothing? Clothing. <laughs> Take two. Oh, still so much to do. We need to turn up all this equipment, and then we need to put it up. Then, about all, we have lunch. Then we have Yeah, one more time. <laughs> Punch, monkey. Down! Right out of the bucket. Okay. Goggle zoom face. In, zoom in. Hey. Go, go, go. This iceberg must leave this all cold. Five, five, five. Close me. Okay, we're going to find where you guys are. Okay, yes. Well... Here it goes. Perfect. Everybody freeze. Jump, 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 jump. It just keeps going. What the heck? Three. But just for fun. Oh. He's just throwing money in the streets now. Oh, I'm okay. I love cover Get candy. No, we should get drinks. We should get candy. So stupid. All right, you've got the hydraulic spanner in your hand. Sing it. You're gonna get it. Will their taxes go down by 50% because there's prices going to be Well, technically, you're the clones, so you're stupid. Ah. Perfect. I love hover I, I'm... Hold on, so we're gonna start like at the top of the... Oh, 
Can you sing It's a Whole New World the entire no, time? No. <laughs> and then you say anything like, you take care now or something like that? Or? Remember. Some wise pronoun thing. All right, and action. <laughs> It's a wrap. I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> we totally need this to be a blooper right now. Okay, so are you so ready? Should I should I mess up? No, and we're, no. We don't do fake bloopers, we do real bloopers.